Hey folks, if you're about to jump into Forza Motorsport for the first time, I have a few quick beginner tips to help improve your experience, make you a faster driver, save you credits, and more in the newest Forza Motorsport. To start us off, fuel management is free performance in just about all featured multiplayer racing and most single player if you play with fuel usage on, you will have to manage fuel. The game will often default you to a fuel level at the start of races that is far off what's needed for most events, and that's extra weight you don't need to be hauling around. So for qualifying, you only need to put in enough fuel to get you through three laps, or however long qualifying is. And always make sure you check the length of the race itself, because many multiplayer races are around five to ten laps, and you don't want to start with twice as much fuel. There's no real harm in giving yourself an extra lap or so to be safe, especially if you drive hard, but if you do find yourself cutting it close on fuel towards the end of a race, Short shifting, getting on throttle more gradually out of corners, and coasting a bit before breaking into corners will help stretch that gas out just a little bit more and might make the difference between you crossing the finish line or not. On the same theme here, we now have selectable tire compounds between soft, medium, hard, and wet. This will play a huge role in your lap times. You can easily gain a full second swapping to soft tires on a medium length circuit. So if you want to qualify towards the top of the grid, make sure you're qualifying on soft tires. On that note though, you might not be racing on softs, so it's still a good idea to get some practice on the tires you'll be racing with because your braking zones and corner grip will change. Many online races will have you running the default medium compound, which can still last less than 10 laps depending on car and conditions. The softs can wear out in less than six, and you will feel a noticeable loss in grip well before the tire is completely shot. So make sure you aren't stretching it too far. You want to end your sessions with maybe about a third to a quarter of the tire bar left at the least. Anything lower than that, and you're going to be killing your lap times on most courses. If you want to save your tire health, brake smoother, don't run up onto the curb so much, and be gentle with your steering input. Over-rotating your steering wheel in corners murders your tires. And as a final note here, don't forget to switch to soft tires in Rivals. I'm not sure why it doesn't just default you to minimum fuel and best tires here, but hey, one little adjustment you can make to be faster than the rest. All right, now let's change it up and talk about an amazing new feature that we have now here in motorsport, skipping a lap. Some of you will have heard about this already, but here's your reminder to use it when you need to. This feature is available in practice for multiplayer races as well as rivals, and it does what it sounds like, skips you forward to a new hot lap. So if you mess up in practice or on a rival's lap and go off track, and you just know there isn't much value in completing the rest of the current lap, you can just hit the start button, skip lap, and the game will fast forward you to the start of a new hot lap, saving you tons of valuable time. You can even do this right at the start of rivals to just completely skip your outlap if you want. It's a really nice quality of life feature. And while we're here, I do also want to point out that in multiplayer sessions, you can hit the pause button whenever you need to. The game will ghost your car, and the AI will take over to keep driving the track for you, just at a much slower speed. So if you're in practice, or qualifying, or even in the worst case, a race itself, and you absolutely need to pause to put out a house fire or something, just know that the game's got you covered, and you aren't going to end up careening into the nearest wall. Now let's jump over to private multiplayer, where we have a ton of nice options here to create all sorts of events from four-way competitive team multi-class races with custom rules to casual drift meetups. There's a lot here, but the main thing I want to focus on is this section, race start. Normally, there's no practice or qualifying session in private multiplayer races, but you can make your own. Turn collisions off, then add a roll-off delay of maybe 5 to 10 seconds, set the number of laps that you want for qualifying, and then make sure you set a race timer that's somewhat longer so everybody has a chance to run all of their laps. And then just run the race as is. This will serve as your qualifier, with staggered drivers all competing for best lap without any worry about collisions. Then, and this is the kicker, make sure that when you start the next race with your lobby, 
you turn on best race lap grid ordering and ascending grid order. This will take the fastest laps from the previous race, which was your qualifier, and then order drivers based on that. And fun bonus here, you can even run reverse grids if you want by just swapping to descending grid order. And for one more tip here, you can save and load event presets. This is a big time saver that lets you set up any custom event you want, name it whatever you want, and store it for later. Really nice for building preset, qualifier, and race settings. Okay, now let's talk cars. We've got a few things here. To start, in some game modes like free play, rivals, and featured multiplayer, you can rent a car. This is a great way to just test drive something in free play, for example, or compete online without having to buy something new. Just know that you can't upgrade or tune rented cars, and they won't increase in level. So if you do have the cash to spare, it's really just best to buy the car, so you can at least gain some levels out of driving it. Next up, when you're picking a car for a new series, don't forget about cars you already own. The game will lean you away from this and kind of hide it off to the side, but if you have an eligible car for the series, you can absolutely use it. Finally, motorsport players will likely know this, but for my Horizon folks out there, know that you can sell cars here in motorsport directly back to the game to earn some credits. Super helpful for duplicate cars that you don't need. Just make sure you don't sell leveled up cars that you might use someday, otherwise you'll have to grind those levels back. And now it's time to talk about something that's a bit of a hot topic for motorsport, and it's honestly something that I could see them changing eventually after launch. I am, of course, talking about the upgrade system. You no longer spend credits to upgrade cars. Credits are now essentially only used to purchase cars, and upgrades are bought with car points. These points are awarded based on your car's level from 1 to 50, and are refunded in full when you uninstall a part. So don't feel like you need to be careful with your upgrades, as you always get the full amount of car points back for your car's level. In most cases, I would recommend focusing on upgrading your tuning options first, so things like anti-roll bars, race suspension, differentials, and so on, to give you more control over the handling characteristics of your car. And sort of on that note, do the practice sessions in single player if you want levels. You can breeze through these by skipping the practice sessions, but you'll end up finishing most of these series with a car that's only maybe level 10 to 15 or so. The practice sessions are not only valuable in their own right for teaching you cars and tracks, they're also great at boosting your car's level. Now let's get back to the topic of tuning. If you want a decent indicator of whether or not you're making the car faster with your setup, well Motorsport can actually simulate lap times with different tune settings on a per track basis. Here's how it works. Load into the track you want to tune for, then look at your fuel and tire menu to see a simulated lap time with different tire compounds. Cool enough on its own, but this also reacts to your tuning input, and I've found it to be at least decently accurate as a general guideline. Start with stock settings and check your time, then make some adjustments based on your preference and see what it does. I often found in my testing that my times did improve alongside the simulated time. I would just be careful not to trust this too much. I've noticed it's not perfect, and at the end of the day, if you don't like the feel of the car, then simulated pace doesn't really matter and some settings that might improve pace will also increase things like fuel usage and tire wear. So tune with your own judgment and test on a track, but you can use this as a tool to help fill the gaps a bit if you don't know where to go next or need a good starting point. All right, now let's talk game settings. Obviously, a good bit of this is nothing more than personal preference, but there are actually a handful of adjustments to the default game settings that I would recommend to anyone. To start, I would strongly recommend turning on track limits, at least early on. These can be shown as either little triangle markers or a solid ribbon, and can be left on all the time or just while you're nearing the track limit. Track limits have all been redone for this game, and in general are wider to include curbs. And it helps to know track limits so you aren't getting penalties or leaving extra track on the table and needlessly slowing down your lap times. Next, turn on proximity arrows for other cars, especially if you play in one of the more first-person camera angles. 
Motorsport doesn't have a radar or spotter, so this is the best way to keep the racing clean while battling with other drivers. And here you can also adjust FOV. More is better for spatial awareness, but too high can produce a fisheye effect and throw off your perspective, making it harder to judge distances while racing. Now, if you play on a controller, you might want to adjust your dead zone settings. I wouldn't suggest going beyond about 3 to 5% from max on either range, but pushing out things like your steering, acceleration, and braking can do wonders for making the game feel more responsive and controllable. If you notice any steering drift or phantom input, you will likely need to re-increase your inside dead zone. Also, for controllers, don't be afraid to use sim steering. If you're struggling to keep control of the cars, then normal is fine, but sim steering will make the cars feel more responsive. If you play on a wheel, then sim steering should be standard. And please know that you can adjust a lot of settings here to dial in your force feedback and get much more out of your wheel. Motorsport actually feels amazing once it's dialed in, but the handful of wheels I've tried certainly need some tweaking to get there. You want to get to a place where you can start to really feel the load over the front tires and can tell when you're understeering or over rotating the wheel or starting to slide in the rear. If you're struggling with the wheel, certainly give it some time, but also you probably just need to tweak your settings. And as a final note here, you don't need a wheel to play motorsport. This game plays completely fine on a controller and you can still be very competitive. Wheels are fun and immersive, and I find them easier to drive in motorsport, but don't be afraid to stick with a gamepad. You can still be really fast. Now on the subject of being fast, let's wrap up with some general race advice that I think really applies here here to motorsport. To start, save your race replays, especially in multiplayer. Then watch them back and look at things like your cornering versus the fastest driver, see where they break compared to where you break and where they turn in. Rivals is another great place for this, by the way. And if you play in first person, it's super helpful to watch your replays back to see how much of the track you're actually using. You don't want to be entering corners with a full car worth of track on the outside and you want to make sure you're actually hitting those inside apexes. Looking at replays is also pretty helpful for reviewing race incidents. If you collided with another driver, even if you think it was their fault, check the replay and see if maybe you just didn't give them enough space or if there was something you could have done to avoid the incident. This will really help clean up your driving and understand what happened from a better perspective. And finally, for those new to motorsport, take it slow and easy. Use those practice laps. Turn on the racing line for a while if you need to, to get a feel for general braking distances. I would suggest not relying on it too heavily though. It can end up slowing you down if you trust it too much. In general, it's best to start driving by braking early and often. A slow, clean lap is better than a fast lap where you go off track. Build up to the speed you want to be at, use whatever assists you need to get started, and have fun with motorsport. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, and stick around because there is a lot more guide content coming in the near future, including a wheel setup guide coming up next.